we say between 1701 to 1735 is the Fox Wars. It makes it look like we're at war all the time. But there were times when we tried to, to slow it down, to stop it. But we weren't allowed because nobody else wanted it to end. Upon the quiet moraines of central Illinois, the nascent waters of the Sangamon River trickle eastward before dropping south and off to the west to flow through the state's more familiar histories. This pastoral setting betrays what took place here, before Abraham Lincoln, before the United States. Here, on this enigmatic battlefield of the Fox Wars, the native Meskwaki people struggle desperately to survive against the power of colonial France. By 1730, the alliances upon which the Foxes have relied are deteriorating. And what it does, it precludes the foxes from having any quick place to, to withdraw to. They're able to, to fortify it, cut down trees and dig some trenches. Their opponents can't get in there, but the foxes cannot get out. Nearly erased by three centuries, but discovered anew, in remnants found beneath the vanished prairies, in first-hand accounts long dormant in distant archives, and in the words of the Meskwaki people themselves, this true and tragic story of Illinois' early history can now be told. The accounts that uh, Joe Pizer was able to get out of, uh, of the archives in France were spectacular. And the oral tradition of the Meskwaki people who remembered this 250, 300 years later. We don't call it the Fox Fort. We call it the Tepeshkunag, the time when we got surrounded. Siege Upon the Sangamon, a new project by History Factory Films, relates how this important chapter of the Fox Wars came to be understood as fact. More importantly, it compels us to look beyond well-worn narrative to witness the near destruction and eventual triumph of the Meskwaki people.